Hey there, how you doing? Hope you're hanging in there. So there's a specific reason why I'm making this video and there's even more of a particular reason why I'm putting it at the beginning of this particular episode. So if you didn't see on social media, primarily Austin's social media at the Mr. Taco BLP on Instagram and the Mr. Taco BLP on Twitter, Austin, our co-host announced that he is stepping away from the bottom line to focus on his personal life. And he has not indicated um, when he will return, um, but he said he will be back. He just needs to step away for a while to take care of himself and just focus on more important things, which we totally understand. You got other priorities to deal with other than this. We understand. Go do what you got to do. So... This particular episode is going to be his last one for a while, but this one is very special because this interview is probably one of our favorite interviews that we've ever done so far. So with that being said, enjoy this interview, and Austin, please take care of yourself. We love you, and the door is always open for your return whenever you feel like it. But with that being said, sit back, relax, and enjoy the interview. But first, a word from our sponsor. A portion of this episode is sponsored by NordVPN. Take back your online privacy with the best in the business. Head over to nordvpn.com slash BLP and get our exclusive discount plus four months absolutely free. And the best part is that it's totally risk-free. So if you don't like it, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. So do not miss out on this exclusive offer from NordVPN. That's nordvpn.com slash BLP. What's going on? Welcome to the bottom line. Jimmy Finizzi and Mr. Taco with you, aka Austin Myers. We hope you're well. Be sure you hit us up on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at bottom line WMCX and use hashtag bottom line and follow us as well it helps us a lot also if you are new make sure that you subscribe on youtube and on all audio platforms and hit that bell on youtube so you don't miss an episode and include jimmy when searching for the bottom line austin how you doing bud i'm doing very okay very okay well you're gonna be feeling a lot better after this because it's a very special day for you my man because you're the one that set up this interview so we should be feeling uh pretty damn proud of yourself as today we are going to be interviewing a band that if you don't recall, we did a reaction video with these guys. Well, not actually with them, but of them. I went into this completely blind, not knowing who they were. So this guy introduced me to them, and trust me, I'll be doing a lot of thanking of him later, but I digress. But the band we are interviewing today is known as Voila. Did I get that pronunciation correct? Because I've been getting it wrong a ton of times. And you've been correcting me a bunch, so I want to make sure I get my facts straight before I introduce them. You're nodding your head, yes. Okay, good. I just want to be sure. <laughs> so, they are known as Voila. I keep saying Voila for some stupid reason. I have no idea. But they are known as Voila. They're an L.A.-based pop rock duo. We'll get more of their origin stories and definitely talk about their brand new album that just dropped a couple weeks ago called Happy Never After. Which, by the way... If you didn't see our full album reaction to that, the replay is available on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash bottomline WMCX. Go check it out. I promise you it will be worth your time because that album is, oh my God, it's fantastic. So with that being said, we want you to sit back, relax, have some laughs, and enjoy our exclusive interview with Voila. Enjoy. Austin, like I said, this is a big deal. For you my friend and i should be thanking you for this because you are the one that introduced me to this band completely blind out of nowhere because if for those that don't recall i said it in the intro we did a reaction video with these guys not actually with them but we did a reaction video of these guys i had no idea who they were until the end of the video and apparently i've been pronouncing their name wrong this entire time so very sacrilegious i apologize but anyway that's beside the point today we have an L.A.-based pop rock duo. They currently reside in California as we speak. They just dropped their brand new debut album called Happy Never After, which we did a full reaction to on our Twitch channel. Be sure you go check that out if you have not done so because it is muy perfecto. It is fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, 
please join us in welcoming on the one and only voila gus and luke gentlemen it is an yes. absolute pleasure how the heck are we doing the the pleasure is ours man thank you so much for having us this is this is an honor and, and your reaction videos were fantastic and it, we're just pumped dude it's so good to be hanging out Dude, that that means that means more to us than anything. Thank you so so much for not only checking us out and subscribing to us on YouTube, but also for the follow on Instagram. We were talking a little bit about about that off the air. You followed us on Instagram. By the way, if you're not subscribed to us or following us, what the heck is wrong with you? No, I'm just yeah. kidding. But please, no, go subscribe to us. Subscribe to us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hey, hey, listen, we're trying to hit 10k by the end of the year on YouTube. Yeah. So please help us get there. It will mean the world to us. But anyway. <laughs> That's beside the point. Let's jump into this conversation, gentlemen. So for those that know me personally, everyone knows I love origin stories, so I have to know. And I want to start with Gus on this one. Cool. How did you guys first meet? We went to music school together, a place called Thornton, which is at USC. Okay. Um, and it was, the it was probably genuinely one of my first classes, maybe the first class, a music class. And I was sitting and I was fresh from England. I knew no one. I had probably one friend at USC. And to call her a friend was a stretch. Um, <laughs> and I was, I was sitting there on my own. And there was maybe one seat in between. And Luke walks in. I'm not even kidding. In like shorts, flip flops, and like a t-shirt. I've never seen someone so underdressed for school in my fucking life. <laughs> guy walks in like, like a skateboard under his arm type thing and he like looks around sees me and then he'll tell you but he saw this this person that he didn't really want to sit next to and he comes and he just plonks himself right next to me he's like what's up bro and we just got chatting and genuinely ever since then we've just been making music and like that's now that was i mean that was like eight years ago we used to do sort of electronic music and you know, voila started. We put out our first tunes in 2018, and now we're here with our with our debut album. And you know, it's been it's been a pleasure. Um, but that's basically it. Yeah, yeah we'll yeah. definitely talk about your debut album a little later. But Luke, I gotta ask you now: How much of that story what Gus told is 100% factual? It's definitely accurate. He's he's leaving out a couple <laughs> things. First was that not only was I underdressed, but I was late. Kind of like how, kind of like how you relate to this interview. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. I, I think there was like hey, a hey, bit listen, of a listen, screw man, up on listen, my I'm, 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 we're, we're just playing around. It's all love, but please continue. We're sorry. No, there, uh, no. Like I said, I think on my birth certificate they wrote Luke Eisner, but they meant late Eisner. So it's just <laughs> you know, I, I'm just born to be late. You know what I mean? But um, I didn't miss anything, did I, Luke, really? No, yeah, so other than that, I mean, yeah, I, like Gus was saying, I walked into the room and there was two empty seats. One was next to a girl who I met during orientation, and there was nothing wrong with her. I'm just from a small town where people talk slowly, and she talked about 800 words a minute. And I just, I wasn't sure I could handle that at 9 o'clock in the morning. I mean, I was half asleep when I rolled in there. So, um, yeah, so I sat I next to the girl. either. And at, at the time, we bonded over our love for Avicii um, because at the time, Avicii was the only person in dance music that was doing like song based dance music. And we were really inspired by that true album. And uh, so we clicked right away. And Gus had a studio set up. He had like a, a cool dorm room where it was just him. And so he built a studio in there. And so we went there that day and, and wrote a song the first day that we met. And we've just been making songs ever since every day and i can't get rid of him so if you have any tips let me know <laughs> hey listen in, in all seriousness god rest avici's soul i mean way yes. too young he's gone way too soon oh. so our condolences go out to him and his family so yeah. now i gotta ask you both this and luke i want to start with you on this question here i know austin is dying to ask you a couple of questions don't worry austin we will get to you i promise but i have to ask you this Yes. Now that we got the origin stories of how you two met, yes. how did the idea for Voila come about? It came because we had way too many names. And um, we, when we first met, we started as Symphony. That was our, our, our name um, when we were doing electronic music. Then, and this was my idea, so I'll take the heat for it, but I thought it would be good to call us Goldilocks because we had long blonde hair. Now, let me just repeat that for you. 
I wanted to name a band Goldilocks. So I, I did everyone a favor because that it just, yeah, it saved a lot of embarrassment moving forward. Um, then we were Captain and Mamba, which was like a, which as I repeated, it sounds like a really bad Marvel movie. Um, and uh, so then Gus was like, I think I want to change the name. Um, and I think he came with some like ridiculous ideas like Child of Samson or something crazy. And I was like, absolutely not, dude. Um, but this is the last time we're changing it. And we both grew up loving magic. And the word voila literally translates to there you are. And I feel like good music should be a mirror, not a megaphone. You should be able to see yourself in it, not just be sung at. And so there you are is how I hope people feel when they listen to voila. They hear the lyrics, they they hear the songs, and they go, oh, that's me. There I am. And thus voila was born, a French word by two non-French people. Can you imagine? Austin, Austin, I, I just got to ask you this. Can you imagine if they stuck with Goldilocks? Can you imagine how much attention they would get if it was still Goldilocks? I mean, come on. Austin, Austin, you have to admit that would at least – that would be very entertaining. Come on, man. Yes. you got to back me up on that one. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, literally, he's literally he's like, no. Uh, I got nothing. How sick would it have been for a live set to have the entire band be in the three bear outfits? So we were going. Oh live. my we god! Like god. on the drum, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. If someone wants to take the idea, you have my blessing. Hey, y you know what? There would definitely be ticket sales. I can guarantee <laughs> you that. But Gus, also, I promise I'll get to you. But Gus, was there anything else that you wanted to name this band other than what Luke said? uh we had yeah mate the you know what i had a i had a list of names honestly i might even dig on my phone to i would oh, God. Like, God. Here we go. but the, the the funny thing the funny part of that is like luke's actually doing me a favor because his words were dude if you change this name one more time i'm done <laughs> like it was it was to the point where i was texting him a new name every week bro i was like you know what like this feels good and you know when you you know when you fall in love with something like for the first like you know I don't know it might be it used to be like Warhammer for me or like some like obsession and I was completely obsessed but then like the next month I found something new that was like me with band names yeah I just kept dreaming up new ones but that was the I'll find them but I don't want to search now because I'll probably have to I go think, <laughs> I think there was a moment too that we were going to instead of voila because we loved like basing it off of magic and, and incorporating magic into the visual elements. I think it was going to be abracadabra for like a second. I think we even got the, the email for abracadabra. Oh yeah. We have that. I still have that on my Gmail. Yeah. yeah, so, oh, funny. Gosh. yeah. so that was, that was the closest call, but we escaped and now we're voila or to a lot of people it's voila, which is, you know, yeah, which is hilarious. <laughs> not, not, not even you. One of my one of my closest childhood friends, and I won't call him out, but his name rhymes with Brad. He literally. Oh, this is someone who like is gonna stand in my wedding. It's like, bro, I just want to say, like, I'm so proud of you guys. Like, Voila is a huge deal to me, and I was like, Voila is a huge deal to me too, man. <laughs> so I'm so I'm not the only one that screwed it up. All right, no, thank God I'm no, not alone. No, no. I also refer to it as Voila in conversation because I think it's so well, funny. Well, there you go. Yeah. See, 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 Austin, you don't have to badger me about making mistakes. I, I can admit when I'm wrong. Hey, you were, you were referring to the to us at the end of the day. It doesn't matter what you call us as long as you're calling us to dinner, you know? So that's what's up. I guess point taken. So the first question I have is about the little video series that we reacted on. Yes. How did that come about? Mm. Yeah, dude, that, that, I was legit going to ask that question. Thank you, Austin. Thank you. So that for, for me, that came about, um, I did a show called Family Reunion on Netflix, and it was my first time doing a three camera comedy. And if you're not familiar with what that is, uh, that's shot in front of a live audience. And it's kind of like a play um, because you don't do separate takes for each person's reaction. You run it once and three cameras are recording. And that's then what the editor has to play with. Um, right. so you, you take a day and you rehearse it with the actors. And then the next day you come and you do the whole show front to back one time and they record it mm. or scene to scene. Um, and I was in love with watching the monitor of, of these one takes, you know, of watching the, the cameras just follow the actor. And I felt like 
you know, in, in the, the final presentation that you see on Netflix, you know, there's obviously cuts to different cameras. But when you're watching it on one, I'm like, this is so beautiful because you can see every little reaction of, of the actor's performance. And I felt how wonderful would that be for a song is if you felt like you were just walking behind these actors like a ghost, kind of like, you know, when you're in spectator cam, when you, you die in Halo, you know, you're just following the, the person. I was like, that would be a really wonderful thing to do. And we should do it for a series of videos. So then at the end, you know, you can watch all five together as if you were just in the room. Um, and I also just felt like it was a challenge and something a little different. I think nowadays a lot of music videos are just really overproduced and spend a lot of money. And I'm not a huge condoner of that for our band personally. So um, I, I like this solution for us. Mm, yeah, that's I, I, I found that to be a very interesting concept because I did notice it was a lot of just one sh one singular shot and that's it i didn't notice any cutoffs or anything like that i mm -hmm. found that to be extremely extremely fascinating and you know what it paid off it paid off Thank and you. all all of them look absolutely fabulous no of course it's 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 absolutely our pleasure the record is also a concept album about a play so we right, felt that, right. that it would be nice to do to shoot it like a play and um, you know what to pick it to to get some exclusive stuff i know we were talking about that before but we I think we can say this, Luke, because we're, yeah. we're delivering it on Friday, but we have a follow-up single coming out in pretty much exactly a month. Nice. And it's like, to, to Luke's point, like the song is basically the description of a play. Um, okay. Like the whole story is like you're watching your life unfold in front of you as if you're watching a play. Like it's basically a manifestation of your own, of re your own reality. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a ballad. It's a piano ballad that was going to be on the album. And then at the last minute we had to pull it. Um, mm -hmm. but we're releasing it literally in a month and we're, we're really excited about it. And like, it's been a song that we've had on our computers for, I don't know how long Luke, but maybe four years yeah. that like we had the idea and we had like the original song, but we just juiced it up and we're, we're super excited to release it. But this is the first time we're talking about that right here on, on the, uh, on the show. Wow. Well, Austin, I think you know what we need to do, my guy. I, I think you mm -hmm. already know what's coming, <laughs> mm -hmm. but anyway, while he's thinking of another question here, I have something very fascinating because you, you brought up Netflix. Mm -hmm. There was a song you did for a Netflix movie called tall girl. It's called yes. Stand Tall, in which, Luke, you were actually in the movie. Now, me personally, yes. I've never seen the movie before, even though I probably should. Um, but tell me this. What was it like to not only write a song for a movie, but write a song for a movie that you starred in personally? What was that like? For me, it was, it was an honor because part of, you know, doing a, a film is you become so – connected to the material, whether you, you want to or not, because you are reading it every day and you're coaching on it. Um, right. And I, as a songwriter, I was seeing so many parallels to the song Stand Tall and the movie. So we put that song out before the movie came out, um, actually mm -hmm. for my father who, who was, was struggling with cancer. And oh, um, I was already to hear that, man. Thank you. Yeah, you know, and, and um, we were able to put, put that version out now, when I was working on the film, the theme of the film is, is kind of struggling with, with being bullied and, and struggling with just taking it a day at a time and finding yourself and overcoming. Um, and, you know, while that's a different struggle than cancer, it's still a struggle. And we felt that if we could rearrange the song a little bit, we brought on Ava Michelle, who played the tall girl in the movie, um, to sing it with us. And I thought it would be a really nice thing to present to the director. And uh, when we did, they liked it. And the last line of the film happens to be the word stand tall. So I feel like there was a lot of really serendipitous moments brought together with, you know, Gus and I and, and Ava really caring about the message of the film. And uh, man, was that cool to, to, see, to, to, to see myself and, and hear the band tied together, my, my loves coming together. And uh, yeah, it was an honor, man. And I think the song is, is actually an important song for for people we get a lot of really nice messages about that song helping people yeah. through different struggles and uh that's 
amazing. You know, we, we did it to help my dad and for it to help people that we have not physically met is really, um, yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely. Humbling. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Now, Gus, for you personally, what was it like to write a song for this movie? It was amazing for us. It was it was great. We being able to like tap into stories together is incredible. And and for me, like the way I like to, to talk about stuff like that is to like dive into our process because I feel like the unique part of Luke and I is, you know, separate to a lot of different bands that write their songs, write their songs together. Um Luke and I work differently in that, like, he does the lyrics mm -hmm. majority. We, we both, like, work a bit on everything. But, you know, he – it's basically his stories and then my melody. So mm -hmm. I will, like, hum stuff. Like, for Stan Tall, for instance, we had that song. But, like, we dove in there to tell a different story. And it's like, okay, how do we match these vowel sounds? And my, you know, my, my little melodies I sing are just the most bizarre-sounding things you've ever heard in your life. <laughs> Like A's, O's, E's, I's, U's, just all mashed together. And poor Luke's got to dive in and be like, okay, how the hell do we tell a story from this? <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I love I love our process like that. I feel like it's super unique. Um, and it's just like when you work a certain way for a certain time, you know how it is. You guys probably have the same thing. Like you have that chemistry where you just like, you run off each other. You don't even talk about it anymore. You don't mm -hmm. even need to discuss anything because you know your roles and you – you don't, you don't like, you know, crossfire at all. You just do what you do. And, and that was the same for Stan Tool. Like, I think we, I honestly think we reworked that in about an hour. Like we yeah. just turned it around and, you know, it felt just really good. And yeah. So, so for me, it was an honor, it was an honor to do that. And, and, you know, yeah, Luke, Luke really nailed it with the storyline for sure. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, that's, that's, I'm bleh. I'm sorry, Luke, go ahead. Oh no, not at all. I was just, I was just saying, you know, and, and, and Gus was also very close to my father as well. So it was really nice to, to bring that together. And, and that's the really special thing about a band is um, they become your family. You know what I mean? I, I view Gus as a brother, um, not just in, you know, a, a coworker. And when you're writing things about your love life, your losses in life, all those things, you become very close. And I think, that song, I'll always look back on that as, as a very important time um, in the family that is voila. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I mean that's that that's a really good point. And again, we're sending we're sending our best wishes to you and your family. We're sorry Thank to hear about you. your father. Austin, before I get into my next question, do you have another one prepared? Yes. I want to know how the Hey Violet collab came around. Ah, that's a good one. Well, we it was funny. We actually, that one was a, again, a supernatural one because we had a session set up that was not even for us. Like we, to, to, to get through COVID when touring stopped and like, you know, a lot of musicians livelihood stopped. Um, we dove in really hard to like writing music for other people um, and like producing and writing and, and all that stuff. And we got put in a session with the Hey Violet lot um, and we wrote this tune and it was going to be for them. And then we listened to it. and us, Luke and I were working on it. And we were like, hang on. Like, you know, sonically, this fits what we're doing. Like, what if we what if we made this like a boy and a girl and like change the story slightly? Um, and we could put it out as a collab. And we literally, Luke and I got in the room again, kind of similar to the Stan Tall thing. Reworked the story a bit. Luke was like, okay, let's tell it from this perspective. And we sent it to the to the Hey Violet team. And, and they loved it. And then we put out the song. Like it was literally like, like you said, like you were saying earlier, like, what if you just ask? Like we just mm -hmm. asked and they were like, you know what? It fits, the timeline works, let's go. And that was a dream for us too. Cause at the time that was our, for sure, like our biggest feature at that moment, we were so honored because I've been listening to their records a lot. Like I love their songs. Amazing. And, you know, they had an amazing, they, they opened up five seconds of summer for like that, this Ooh. crazy tour. And I saw videos from that and it was, yeah, they're, they're so sick. They're amazing live too. It was an awesome. all, they also, they also really, really respect the art of music and the art of, of branding. I, I really love them. And I, I think that they're in this industry for all of the right reasons. And that's um, rare. Yeah. Casey, now, okay. Nia, Rena. So, sorry, out. sorry, sorry, Gus. Go ahead. No, don't worry. I just, I just shouted them just out. Give me a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's all good. I was, all, I was gonna say. Speaking of working with artists, 
What was it like working with Kellen Quinn on your new album? Dude, you know, I, I, I have goosebumps underneath all of this. <laughs> um, hey, hey, because we, we were talking about this off the air. I yeah. love sleeping with sirens, especially with Kellen. So, so hearing your song with Kellen, that, that, that got me in a way, not going to lie mm -hmm. to you. So what was it like working me with him? Me too, man. I, I mean, I'm about to go see Sleeping with Sirens now for the ninth time. Hell yeah, let's go! <laughs> I, I, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm such a fangirl for um, Sleeping with Sirens in general. Growing up, that was that was my band. You know, that was like, I, it's funny actually. My my buddies in town, but um, we took school photographs for the yearbook in our Sleeping with Sirens T-shirts. So like, you know, that that's our our tribe. Um, Really exciting. I actually met him through Tall Girl. I was doing an interview in New York for that show or when it came out and they were on afterwards and I was pooping my pants in the dressing room, like asking the showrunner, like, if, like, is the band here? Is the here? And they're like, yeah, they're in the other room. And I was like, and, and she's like, but you can't leave your room because we need to find you in case. And I was like, screw you. And I just left. <laughs> and we were there. You're just right after it. There you I go. I was like, you don't understand, man. Like, <laughs> it's like my religion is over there. Like, I have to go. Oh my so, god. Um, yeah. So I, you know, went over and and they were the nicest guys ever. And and after the film came out, Kellen had DM'd me. You know that his daughter had watched. Um, and I had obviously, when he opened up his DM, he saw that I had DM'd him two hundred times about every song. <laughs> so. so <laughs> But uh, yeah, long story short is, is we kind of just stayed Instagram friends for a while. And then I just told myself once we hit over a million monthly listeners, I would re reach out. And I've been, in, been mentioning him in interviews for years. And uh, I think a combination of all those things and then the song that we wrote that we sent him, which was cursive, um, all that came together. And, and he got it done so quick because he's obviously the best on planet Earth. So yeah, it was amazing. I notice. Uh, I notice your cat wants to be the uh, center of attention right yeah, there. Yeah, the, the the cat is also a big Sleeping with Sirens fan, right? <laughs> yeah, let's go. This, that, that's yeah. kitty right there. Yeah, Salmon, you see him in the mosh pits, man. He he tears it up. Oh my god, he tears it up. I love it. Let's get into your new album here for a second here, because as the both of you know, we did a full album reaction to it, and we both think it's absolutely. Awesome. Probably some of your best work yet. Um, tell me this. What's your favorite song on the album? Mine changes a lot. I, th I think the cornerstone song of Happy Never After personally holds the most nostalgia for it. It was my dad's favorite song that we we ever did. It was it's the okay. oldest song that's on the record that came out. So that one for me is like my treasure song, but I think the song that I like the most and that I'm possibly the most proud of on the record is Hush Now. Um, mm. I think that one for me, uh, yeah, I'm really, really happy with how that turned out and I'm, I just love it, man. I listen to it all the time. <laughs> Gus, what about you? For me, for me, it's an interesting one because I, I always loved Hush Now. I've heard it a lot now, more. Um, and I would also say that's the one that takes me on the journey the most. And I love listening to with like, obviously we don't have fresh ears. Like we've heard these songs millions of times working on them. So it's like to gain that objectivity is a wonderful thing. Like that's why fresh listeners are so interesting to me. Like what song they gravitate to. Um, but it's, for me, it's it's Hush Now and, and Cursive. I, I just love, okay. I love I love cursive. I think sonically, like it's the song where I envisage like anthemic pyrotechnics and flames and yes, smoke. hundred percent oh, with you. 100%. Massive vision boards, you know. Yes, we, we just we just went to see Brimming Horizon actually, Luke and I a couple oh, weeks. Oh, so good, man! So jealous. They're, yeah. they're they're on my bucket list of bands I want to see. Yeah, Dude, right. and they and they played Diamonds Aren't Forever, which they have not played. What? Like, almost at all on this tour. And they, they did it uh, with the guy from Knock Loose. His name's escaping me, but I was like. Oh, Bri Bri Brian Garris. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so they, dude, dude. When I say that that place was literally lit on fire, that's what happened. I mean, it was so <laughs> unexpected. And sleep, Sleepwalking is one of my favorite songs by them, and they replaced it with that, and I wasn't even mad. I was so pumped. All right, all right. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, I definitely want to. I definitely want to see "Bring Me the Horizon" at some point. 
Austin, I never asked you. What's your favorite off their new album? That's hard. I love the whole album. And I'm not going to lie. I was listening to the album before the interview, too. Nice. There you go. Just to ready myself. And it's just so hard to choose because there's songs that I can relate to. And then there's songs where I'm like, I shouldn't be liking this, but yet they do so well with it that I'm liking it. There you oh, go. Thanks, yeah. Appreciate that, Austin. I mean, listen, there's 21 songs on the album, so I, I get it's a tough choice. But um, it's tough for me, too, but mine is Moat. Mo Dude, is I was going to say that. It's a song that nobody really talks about. See, for me personally, I try to focus on more of like the underrated songs mm. on the album. Moat is one of them for me because yes. it, has, it has that perfect mix of that heavy riff in the beginning, which I'm a yeah, sucker man. for. And the there's a little bit of pop element in there too, which I really like. It has a mix of everything I want. It's perfect. So if I had to pick a favorite, it's Mo. All right, I know what, I, I'm with you on that, man. That one, that was that's probably my number two. The reason okay. I love that one is because I'm kind of obsessed with tying songs together, like from older records. Mo, we had a song called Cruel on the Long Story Short EP. That this is the sister song to that, so it's the the yin and yang thing. So it's the opposite reaction to right. cool. uh, It's like the you know the evil sister, I guess, to it. Um, yeah. So I, I loved writing that one, and that was one of the the first ones we actually did for this record. Um, yeah. <laughs> so let's just sum this up. The both of you down below like Hush Now and Cursive. Austin's undecided as of right now, yeah. and mine is Mo. Let's just get that on the record right now. Put it on the record. Wait, what's that? I, I said get that on the record. Exactly, exactly. So now, just this last question about your most recent album, because this is your first full-length debut album. You have three other EPs and then this album. Yes. What does this mean to you personally now that you have a full length album out what does it mean to you to have this out to the world wow um for, for me for me it is the most incredible thing having 21 songs available in one project just to go through like it feels like this is like the culmination genuine culmination of luke and i working together for the last four years on this voila project voila dream to be honest and it feels like i've never really been able to tell someone okay like this is the culmination of what i want to do with my life genuinely yeah. like I, I i could send someone that link and be like you know have a listen through that if you don't like it literally no hard feelings at all but this is what I literally give my every day to, and I'm so proud of it. And to have, you know, to have something that really one thing to to actually justify giving up everything to go into music feels amazing. And I think it's the first time I've really felt that. Like we've had single songs that have done quite well, and like you know how it is. Like Spotify supports one thing, you know, something else f falls on deaf ears. For us, like to see thousands of people every day listening to all these songs just feels like there's some sort of artistic satisfaction there if that makes sense oh that, that makes total sense i i see uh see look even salmon the cat approves of the album that's how much he loves that's it, how popular it is he loves it you know if you listen really closely to some of the songs you can hear him purring <laughs> <laughs> Luke, what about you? No, no Luke, Luke in, in all seriousness, though, same question to you. What does yeah. this first full-length album mean to you? Oh, man. Um, quite, on, quite honestly, I, I've always wanted to do a concept album since I first fell in love with music. Um, you know, I, I fell in love with music because of lyrics and because of the storytelling. You know, um, when I look at American Idiot as a record... Yes, and, you know the fact that they had this vision and these characters, and they they saw the play as they were writing it, and I thought that would be something I would do later in the Voila story, but to be able to do it as the debut album is so like fun and, and brings out the the kid in me, and it's also you know I, I I still listen to the record every day, and it's because it's like a yearbook for me, 
you know i i know all of these memories and all of these stories and and i find that when i think back to high school i don't remember even my teachers names but now i will remember things forever because i can go back to these songs and go oh that's what that's about like oh that's my lovely girlfriend there's my mom there's this experience that i had this is that time that you know yeah. i i i cried so hard that i couldn't see straight like i now have all of those um forever and a lot of those songs were therapeutic for me and it's like medicine that's never going to expire for me i can go back to those and um it, it's it's very utilitarian for me i i'm just mm. selfishly am so happy to have this scrapbook of my my life and and my experiences with gus and it's just great that's yeah. really really awesome now unfortunately our time is running short but before we let you go we just we have to bring this up because you sort of teased on Instagram. And by the way, if you're not following these guys on Instagram, go follow them at We Are Voila. Please go follow them. I promise you it's worth your time. They post some killer memes, by the way. Ooh, <laughs> thank you. And Austin, Austin can tell you, this man is all about the memes. He I'm all loves about them. them. He will feed off all of about them the memes. until the cows come home. I'm sorry, Austin. What'd you say? All about the memes. <laughs> memes, dude. Boom. Yeah, so you, you guys can get along on that aspect. But um, while we were scrolling through your story of memes, um, I think it was like, what, two, three weeks ago, I want to say? I forget the exact date. Yeah. But you sort of teased that you were already working on a follow-up for oh, yeah. Happy Hour well, After. Is, that there anything that, is there anything that you are allowed to say about this? Well, if not, we don't we're we're one hundred percent independent. We can say whatever we want. That's the best. Hey, part of it. Let's easy go. There. Right. Easy there, Luke. Easy there. I'm getting worried. <laughs> it's, it's, it's totally fine. I can't I can't sing them, so it's cool. But <laughs> let me tell you, um, we're we're so pumped on this this new project. Um, I I mean, we're already like essentially we have enough songs for it to be done, but we're going to write more and then, you know, okay. play like you're going to make it. You're not game. Um, I, I already think if, if you liked happy never after, you're going to love it. I think it's, I already, I think it's going this way personally. I think we're Gus and I are only getting better right now. And I mean that with, with no ego, it's just really exciting. Um, so yeah, it's going to be awesome, and we're trying to get it done as quick as possible so we can get it out as quick as possible because the thing I hate the most is you fall in love with the band, but they're with the label, so you don't get to hear their next album for, like, another 18 months, and then, like, that's so not cool. It's like seeing your best friend once a year. That sucks. So, yeah. um, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to solve the problem that I have with bands, and we're going to try to put out as much music as possible so the people who are so loyal to us um get to to hear what we're up to as much as possible austin yeah. once again you know what we need to do when this album comes out right yeah but i do have no. one more question hey, yeah I yeah have, go, go, go ahead one more when are we getting the fifth video oh act five yes yeah man so that's that's that been done. that's been done for a while Okay. Um, we're just waiting for uh, the the press to – we have, like, a debut for that, so they have to let us know when, when we're ready to release that. Um, Fair enough. But, but it's, it's when it comes out, we're also going to be posting it in its entirety, so you can sit and watch it as a, you know, a 24-minute piece. Oh, um, sweet. Yo, that's awesome. All right. All right, you know – all right, Jimmy, you know what we got to do? I don't care that we've heard the first four oh, yeah. already. We're no, doing hey, the whole thing. Austin, Austin, you don't even need to say it. Say less, right? You, you already know we're doing this. <laughs> yeah, dude, absolutely. But I think we're going to do it, or at least I'm going to force everyone to do it for the next uh, the next ah. album. Ooh, we're going to do a series of one takes. I think it's really fun, and I, I hope it becomes I mean, they're fun to watch, too. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely it is. Absolutely. You know, we'll, I mean, we'll I, a new if, space if I, if and, I thought... It, I, I'm sorry, Luke. Go ahead. Oh no, no problem, man. I'm just saying we'll, we'll pick a new space and we'll we'll do a series of videos again, and hopefully that can just become part of the voila experience that you know fans can expect that. And... Yeah, I was gonna say if if we thought the first four acts were fun, I can't wait. Oh, dude, act, act five. That is gonna be. I just can't wait to find out what. I just can't wait to find out what song act five is. Oh, oh my god. Hey, I'm, that's I'm, what's I'm, killing I'm, me I'm, here. I'll tell you right now. You don't. You don't have to. You don't have to give it away. Please don't. I want to be surprised. But if Act 5 
if it's moat, I will cry. <laughs> I, will, I will honest to God cry. You don't have to give it away right now. You can leave it a surprise. But if it is that song, I will cry happy tears. Uh, let, here, let, let, me, let me tell you this. There were three songs that were up for Act 5. It was No Lullaby, Moat, and Hush Now. Okay. All right. All right. That's, that, that's all you can say? That's totally fine. I get it. I want to be surprised because I can't wait to hear this. Well, yeah. unfortunately, gentlemen, our time has come to a close, but this was absolutely an honor to talk to the both of you. You guys are outstanding. Thank you so, so much Thank for you. taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to us two old geezers right here. We truly do yeah. appreciate you. And, hey, you are always welcome back anytime you want. Thank you so much, guys. We will be back. And, and let me tell you guys, you guys are fantastic, and, and we're really – you know, like I said, we're just guys trying to, to put our art into the world as you are. And it's it's really awesome to sit with you guys. And, and more importantly, your energy and your charisma and your kindness is something that I, I hope more and more of uh, the world gets exposed to. Thank you guys so much. Wow. I mean, <laughs> this dude, is that that means that means so much to us. I mean, like, like you said, we're we're just we're trying to build our craft, too. I mean, heck, five years doing the show for me personally. This guy's been with me for little over a year we're just we're just trying to make something of ourselves just like you guys are and so far for you guys it's been a massive a massive success but gus luke again you guys are the best you you are always welcome back and we can't wait for act five and for the follow-up to this project thank you guys again this was such a blast thanks man one of the favorite interviews we've ever done for sure yeah oh, definitely man uh, dude, that that means so much thank you, you they are for- gus and luke from voila go check them out go check out their full-length debut album happy never after on all streaming platforms and also please go follow them on instagram at we are voila and you might see more of sam and the cat as as we see right there if you're not watching on youtube you don't know but anyway that, that's a wrap for us for voila and for mr taco i'm jimmy this is the bottom line and we'll see you next time peace